So continuing with the use of the dial indicator, we can change the anvil face on this thing by adding a piece to it if we need to go further down into the block. We can install a convex face onto the end of this. And you can see the convex face here. Or we can install a flat face. The important part is, is that we have some method of making contact. No matter what end we have on here, we need to make that contact. This one is, sorry, this one is a bit of a barrel face on our convex face, but it's a very small one in comparison to the larger one that I just installed. Then there is one that is a lot sharper to kind of do a pinpoint dimension. And you can see this one here in particular, it's almost getting close to a pencil, but not quite. And that allows us to reach down in between a small dimensional area. So we can add multiple lengths. It's always a good idea, and you can see that there is a knurl on this to, on this anvil extension, so that when you install it, that you take a pair of pliers lightly and turn it to lock it. A lot of technicians I find that I see happen here in the lab is they put it together loose, and then the reading changes because the anvils are loose. So make sure that you tighten them up and you select the face that you want. There is one here that I don't seem to see in my toolkit, but there's another one that actually has a small roller face on it, so that if you have it against something and you're rotating a pulley or something, the crank, the uh, flywheel or something, and you're looking for run out, then it rolls on the face of that particular surface. So that, again, depends on what you're checking for with this particular tool. So good idea to make sure that the tool is left with a face on it. So the next person that picks it up, inclusive of yourself, it's all prepared and ready to go. So next tool I want to take a look at here is our T-square or our um, combination square set. So the combination square set allows us to put in a straight edge for reading dimensional angles. It allows us to install so that we have a 90 for determining how square something is sitting across two different planes. The next one here, and it sometimes becomes a little bit of a fiddle to put together, and I'll show you this here in a close-up in a moment, is we want to put this in so that we can read the angularity difference to determine what our degrees is that we're sitting dependent upon the manufacturer spec or whatever it is that we're looking at. So the one thing I'm going to do here is just take a look at where this tool is set and then that helps us drop it into the groove on the rule. So when we set this tool up, we want to have, and this might be a little hard for you to see in the video, but there is a little lock on the tool and we need to line that up with the slot to be able to get it to slide into position. You can see I'm even wrestling with it here. It's really kind of a fiddly thing, sort of like working with the uh, magnetic dial indicator base. But now once we have this set, we can lock the tool and that keeps the rule in position. There are thumb screws here which lock the degree face that we're trying to attain. So I usually just leave it slightly loose and then for example if we're trying to find out what degree angle this is at, we set it based on what we're checking 
use the thumb screws to lock it, just like you would do on a vernier. Now it's set and it's locked, and I can turn it around and I can read it, and it looks like we are at about 40 degrees. So this way we can determine what dimensional values are. So for an example, we might be looking at a 30 degree valve face angle. So we would set it at 30 degrees and then we could put the valve in here and see that this angle that the valve face is on is 30 degrees. And that helps determine how we're going to service that particular valve. If it's supposed to be 30 degrees and it shows that it's 28 degrees, then it's warned. So then that valve would need to be turned, machined, or replaced depending on what the manufacturer says. So that's another service tool that's being used for checking uh, the values of degrees and squareness. This next tool here is our standard set of gauge blocks. Got to make sure we have these ones here in particular I'm looking for. So the gauge block, so for an example, if we were going to set our outside micrometer to make sure that the dimensional value is calibrated from zero so that the values that we read are 100% correct, then we need to set the tool up. So this one here in particular would be set for, used for setting a four inch or a zero to four inch uh, outside micrometer. So the one micrometer that we have here is a one to two inch micrometer. So then we would use the one to two inch. I'm trying to read the number on it. We would use the one to two inch gauge block, and then we would set that in the tool. And once this is in place in the tool, then we would make sure that the tool is zeroed. And if the tool is zeroed, then we know that we are set to read from one to two inches. So there's how you install that gauge block. And then what we're looking for is to make sure that based on this thing being snug and tight, that this value right here should read zero. If it's out, then we need to adjust that. So the way we would adjust this, if this was out, is we would use the little tool, and then on the back side of the micrometer, we would install the tool and then turn it so that we are right on zero. Now that is calibrated to read from one to two inches precisely, and this should just slide out of there, and now the tool is set to read precisely. Make sure you do check these prior to doing measurements. It's easier to do on a zero because the zero does not require a gauge block. We just drop it to zero, and this one happens to be calibrated at zero. So. The other thing that happens with these, if you leave these on the side of a toolbox on a hot sunny day, the temperature causes the frame to open up a bit and it will change and distort the values of the reading. So you might calibrate it before you start and if you leave it close to heat or you put it somewhere heat on heat like on top of an engine that's warm, then it will change the value. So make sure that any time you are looking for precision measurements that you calibrate the tool and then of course use the appropriate dimensional size tool to get the readings you're looking for based on manufacturer specifications.